Hi Tramps, today we're going to be making Zero Proof Spirits. Now what are they, I hear you ask? Well, you may be familiar with real spirits like gin and whiskey which contain 40%-ish alcohol. But Zero Proof Spirits are a similar idea that contain 0% alcohol. So what's the point, I hear you ask? Zero Proof Spirits allow you to have the taste of a spirit, but without the alcohol. And there are quite a lot of people now who are choosing not to drink alcohol. For religious reasons, if you're out with your friends and you're the designated driver, or you're one of these people that suffers from dreaded hangovers. So that's why we have zero proof spirits. And there's a big market opening up for these. For instance, you can buy Seedlip, a range of zero proof gins, and another example is Strike, who make a zero proof vodka. But the problem is, is these are expensive for what they are. So Seedlit will cost you 22 of your British pounds, whereas a bottle of Strike will cost you 16 pounds. And these have no alcohol in them. So for 16 pounds, you can get one of these, a bottle of real bourbon whiskey. Fortunately, it's possible to make your own. So, let's have a look at how we can do that. All you need is some simple equipment, a kettle, a filter, and a well-stocked spice cabinet. First challenge is when you were drinking alcohol, you're probably used to feeling this burning sensation. So how do we recreate that? Well, we need to turn to some chemistry. You see, the burning sensation comes from the way alcohol interacts with your sensory nerves. Now, that's a brain, not a raisin. All over your body are these sensory neurons in every part that are responsible for detecting things like temperature and pain. Now, this is true for your mouth as well. And some of these nerves, the ones that are responsible for detecting the burning sensation, have got these receptors on the end, trip V1. Now, these receptors are fired when hot things come into contact with them and that's what allows you to interpret as burning. There are also other receptors, trip ap one on other neurons which are responsible for sensing stabbing pain. And these tend to be on neurons that transmit a bit faster than these ones. So, how do we go about recreating the burning sensation? Well, we need something that's able to stimulate these two things. The way alcohol does it is it irritates the lining of your mouth and weakly switch activates these receptors. So you feel a bit of a stab and a bit of a burn. Fortunately, there are things in the kitchen which can do this job that aren't actually alcohol. Exhibit A is this stuff, capsaicin. Capsaicin is a molecule which will bind to the trip A1, the trip V1 receptors and cause burning sensation. Now, you're probably quite familiar with this because you would have consumed a large amount of it if you've ever had a vindaloo. You can get this from chili peppers. So what we need to do then to get the burning sensation is to add chili peppers into our zero proof spirit. So what I've got here is some chili flakes. So there they go. 
chili flakes, that's good. Now the problem is, is capsaicin isn't very soluble in cold water. So that's just gonna stay in those chili peppers if I add cold water to them. So what you need is you need warm or hot water. So bearing in mind spirits generally start with pretty clean water, like spring water. The closest we're gonna get in Cambridge is if I filter it. So add a bit of filtered water. That'll be fine. Stick it on the boil. And what will happen is we can put those, that we can put the hot water into our chili peppers and uh, that'll extract our lovely capsaicin. So let's get on boiling water and we'll add it to our chili flakes. There we go. Let's go up to a hundred. That'll do. Right. So we'll give it a bit of a stir to help the extraction process, get our capsaicin in there. Let's give it a try. Yeah, you can feel a bit of burning, but it's quite delayed. It takes two or three seconds before you feel it. And that's because capsaicin stimulating these buggers uh, and these are pretty slow neurons. So we need something else in there that's gonna give us a bit more of a kick jab uh, as soon as we take a swig. And that's when another molecule comes in. What molecule is this, Mike? I hear you cry. Well, that is piperine. And piperine you find in black peppercorns. So piperine stimulates the trip R receptors. These are the ones that are responsible, give you a sensation of stabbing and cold. And these are, these are on neurons that are a bit faster to transmit to the brain, so you feel their sensation sooner. So let's add some peppercorns. Oh, no, I don't want that many. There we go. Stir that around. So that's pretty much going to be good for what you might call your white spirits. And now there's the definite kick and then a burn. So your clean white spirits, they are they are things like vodka and gin, and they're basically made by getting something that's got sugar in it, fermenting it using yeast, distilling it to get just the alcohol out, and then adding a bit of spring water to bring it down to 40%. So most of what you're tasting is impurities in the water and the alcohol. So in this situation, we've got our water, which is going to have some impurities in it, and we've Instead of alcohol, gone and put capsaicin in there and piperine to give you the burning sensation. So that's good for vodka and gin. But what about aged spirits? So aged spirits are like whiskey. And in these, there are additional flavors. And how they get in there is that the alcohol, or the, spirit, the, white, the clean white spirit, is put into wooden casks and then it's left for about three years or even longer. And over time, what happens is the alcohol that's in there dissolves things from the wood, and it's the, the things that have been dissolved from the wood that you are tasting. Most plants are like a factory of different molecules with thousands of product lines. And lots of different things come out of the wood and you can generate different flavors of spirits by choosing different types of wood barrels to stick them in. But there are some principal flavors 
that will generally be brought out in higher amounts than others, and they're the ones that you tend to taste the most. And examples of these are cinnamaldehyde and vanillin. And once again, you can find these things in your kitchen. So for an aged spirit, we can get cinnamaldehyde from, the clues in the name, cinnamon. So what we need to do is we need to add a bit of cinnamon in here. So get a bit of cinnamon. It's quite a lot, isn't it? There you go, a bit more. There we are. So that will give us our cinnamaldehyde flavour. And now, for the vanillin component, we need to add a bit of vanilla. Now if you are rich and fancy, you can go for a vanilla pod. But since I'm from Essex originally, I'm going to stick with a cheap and cheerful vanilla essence. That should be sufficient. Okay. Let's give that a stir around now. And so there you have it. You've got an aged spirit, albeit zero proof. You've got stuff in there to give you the burn, that's capsaicin and piperine. And you've got stuff in there to give you the flavours that might have come out from wood, which is your cinnamaldehyde and your vanillin. So now, you can go and, to the, and go out and have the same taste as a spirit, but without the hangover. Now obviously this is still pretty hot, so what we're going to do is add a bit more water to it to cool it down. It's also going to have quite a kick because that chilli's been in there for a while. And don't worry about the fact it looks like cat's piss. So here's two evenings out without a hangover after. Cheers.